Hey guys, thank you so much for returning to my channel. This is your girl, Nitra Ping. So, today's video is going to be about <clears throat> my testimony. <sighs> Whenever somebody, including myself, have to tell our testimony, sometimes it's exciting, sometimes it's fun, sometimes it's a little daunting, and you feel like, I don't want to talk about it because... You're still working on a few things and healing from a little bit of it, your story, right? But God is saying for me to just do it because it's going to help somebody out there who has been through similar things that I've been through. And a lot of that is also because God told me to make this channel to help people out there. Um, so I'm going to make this, try to make this uh, every point of my life. Um so i'm the baby of three i have an older brother i have a, a middle sister and i have me um i have a mom who was a single mother i have a father who came into my life after my mother passed away december 2009 when i was 16. um i've known my dad he was around when i was like four three five from time to time in and out but i didn't know him know him until i had to go live with him or i decided to live with him um when i was uh after 16 i decided to go live with him um so growing up i was ridiculed by my family i feel like my family now my mother and my siblings, um, I feel like they were a little extra mean than normal to most siblings would be. I know there's sibling things like that, but I don't know. I'm just like, I'm very sensitive. Like, I'm not super duper sensitive, but I have a big heart and I feel everything really deeply, right? God gave me that heart for a reason. But like, yeah, so um, my siblings used to tease me, say like, oh, you're not my sister because they look like, um, bi they're biracial, but they look like black people. They look like a light-skinned black person. And they'd be teasing me like, oh, you're not my sister. You're a cracker. You're a cracker. You know, you don't belong. You know, we're not like, just stuff like that. Like, you're a cracker, blah, blah, blah. And that used to hurt my feelings. I was six years old when it started. And then I feel like after such, it started with people in school after they started it. Um, people in school would always tell me, you can't do this. You can't do that. Why are you trying to act black? Stop trying to be something you're not. Um, they always try to tell me, like, you can't say this. You can't, like, we would say nigga in school. We were bad kids. Like, boys were really bad in school. But that's neither here nor there. But, like, they started telling me, like, oh, you can't say nigga. Because, like, I'm from the inner city. I'm from, like, the public schools, kind of, like, hoods, ghetto stuff. Like, yeah. And so that used to really bother me. And I used to have to fight for myself. And they would never believe me. That, like, I'm, like, telling them at 6, 7, 8. Like, I'm not acting like nothing that I'm not. I'm actually biracial. I know it doesn't look like it. And then my ex is funny. He said I look like when I was five in New York before I came to uh, another state where I was raised. He said, are you sure your dad is your dad? You look like a little like Mexican child. <laughs> and I kind of, I guess, I, I don't see it, but I guess I can see why it's my skin tone. It was the way my hair looked. Like, it wasn't cut in no like weird, funny um, style or nothing, but I just look like a, a little Mexican kid. So, my dad is Sicilian, my mom is black and white, and I just found out that I have some German in me, so swish is swooling. <laughs> Hagen does. But, um, yeah, uh, so I was always, like, bullied in elementary and middle school, especially, like, sixth grade. Um, I was bullied a lot. And then, like, it was weird because I was, like, a popular. I was always popular since elementary, middle school, high school. I've always been the popular cool girl. Um, but nobody liked me. It was weird. It was funny. I never cared, and I still don't care who likes me or don't. Because guess what? People don't even like they self. So, <clears throat> I don't care who don't like me. 
You don't like me, you don't like God. You got anything to say against me, you got something to say against Christ himself because he lives within me and he is over me, okay? Okay, so, um, yeah, so, like, that was my growing up. And as a lot of biracial people have said, like, we don't feel like we fit anywhere. Um, we're too black for the white people and we're too blue, uh, white and not black enough for the black people. So, we're stuck um, in a place of, like, isolation i guess or not really isolation for a lot of mixed people it's more like ridicule you know being left out for me my situation i was like isolated and excluded and neglected and forgotten and yeah um so i praise god for my upbringing because it taught me not to be racist and not to look at any color in any way for any reason, um, whether it's something bad that they've done or whatever. Um, growing up, my mom always taught me to believe in Christ. She told me her story. Um, basically, it was a life or death situation. I will make another video about it, but basically she's seen Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. And she taught me and my siblings that Jesus Christ will get you through whatever it is that you go through. Um, so boom. Um, by the time I was 15, 14, 14 is when the depression started. I felt really depressed about just not having the best grades in every single grade area, like every single um, subject. Um, I felt like something was wrong. Why can't I get math down? Da, 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 da. I'm not that great with numbers. Never have been. I'm a, I'm more of a creator, more cr um, creative. I love writing. I've always been excellent in writing and reading. Um, but yeah, and then so, boom. My mom had got. Um, she's always had a heart condition, but um, out of nowhere, she had came home one day when I was in my junior year was it junior yeah junior year and she said that the hospital had told her that one side of her heart is enlarging and that she has to hurry up and make a decision and get surgery and so she said she was scared and that it was already almost a year coming up that she was supposed to get this um ablation where you'll go into your armpit and they burn off a piece of the heart that's keep getting um, blockages and keeping the heart from beating properly. And she has an arrhythmia where her heart, I think, will beat a little faster than it should as well. So, it's been, like I said, it was almost a year from 2008 to 2009 that she was like waiting. She said she was waiting on the uh, VA to talk to like the veterans um, hospital for like the uh, Air Force and, and Army and all them other ones to talk to the doctors from the hospital that she was at and that she was also scared to do it because she was scared that it was surgery can she make it through will she make it out alive out of the surgery for the ablation to go into her heart from her underarm and it never happened and unfortunately she passed away um and i still deal with it i am now 15 16 years later I think about her every single day that was my best friend she was the nicest sweetest woman i've met and i haven't really met anyone quite like her quite pure as her quite loving and gentle and patient and giving as her um and i am who i am because of her okay guys i'm not gonna get on the show <laughs> Um, I think about her all the time. I talk about her like where I'm at. I can't help it. Um, but I'm going to make a whole video about my mom's story because she was going to make a book and she never got around to it. So I feel like I need to get her story out there one way or another. But um, growing up, I just always felt like alone and not supported and not really like protected and just ridiculed and left to fend and fight for my identity and for my protection um my mom was that person for me i love my siblings i love them to pieces um however i felt like and i still feel like it's just never been what it should have been as far as protecting me and loving me and really holding it down for me and i always felt like my sister who am i love dearly um would always stab me in the back 
and you know we we got past our last situation in 2019 we, we fell out for two years whatever we got started talking again we're good now um but i just always felt like it was always something and it was not nothing that no sibling should have to go through you know especially once we lose our only parent um and i had to be the youngest and i had to feel that hurt and that pain in it day in and day out i had a god family who i feel like did the same just kind of like left me to deal with it by myself at 16 um who they knew her very well my mother and um i forgave them I, I gave them a piece of my mind back in 2016 when i was 23 i just told them what i felt how i felt it's neither here nor there i just had to tell you my whole story um so boom when my mom died i fell into a deep depression i promised myself and my mom that i would keep my virginity until at least after graduating high school but she passed away december of my junior year going into senior year and i did not go to school well, i went to school like two days or one day and i couldn't stay in class without crying because I used to call my mom at school, like telling her like, hey, how you doing? How you doing? What you doing? I can't wait to see you again when I get home. Stuff like that. And so like that was making it hard to finish my day in school. In 29, uh, 2009, as a junior. And just seeing your mom there passing away. I had deja vu when it happened. It was scary. It was like confusing and then you snap out of it and then like things happen the way they happen and you can't change nothing about it and when it's happening you couldn't do nothing about it because you can't stop somebody's body from doing things sometimes you know and um i was ignorant i was not aware of what was going on i was only a child i had to look back and tell myself like you were only 16 what were you supposed to really know you know and you did what you could you comforted her that was a good thing um but yeah like i feel like a lot of my early years was just um i want to say more so misunderstood and i felt like some type of like like i i felt like i really had to f work hard to get you know seen and up loved and appreciated and my mom made sure she did that. She She's not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about everybody else around me. Um, but once she died, I lost my virginity to this Puerto Rican guy, unfortunately. And I was so sad about it once it happened. I told my mom that it happened. I'm pretty sure she already seen it. But I was like feeling so remorseful and regretful when it happened. And um, yeah, and that was in New York where I'm from in upstate and after that i just fell into like weed i started smoking weed like a few months later december 2010 is when i first started smoking weed um i was never consistent i've smoked weed long, long time years but it was always like do it don't do it don't do it don't i stop i'll go i'll stop i'll go for like six months seven months nine months and then stop and that's been a lot of patterns and a lot of things a lot of areas in my life um, up until this point um yeah so like my mom was the person who raised me um she always taught me one to believe in christ that god will get you through everything reading your word praying and believing in him will get you through everything and you need when you're going through a hard time or you feel like you're losing your sanity or whatever the case may be you just know that you need to hang on to christ and then um she also taught me that no never let nobody try to tell you what you are not you are biracial but you are also black because i came out you came out of me and her brother because she was adopted her brother is um older than her and he's still around and he told me the story of her father and he said a lot of people don't believe that you are biracial because you look a certain way he said but your granddad your mother's father her blood father who was on the farm and was just a helper he is darker than most black people you see out there. Most people have like brown skin. He said your granddad was dark, dark, like dark, dark. And that right there, you don't have no proof because we didn't even know who he was. He was there for a short time and left and was, you know, minuscule and uh, MIA, no 
know any information after that other than that he was from Buffalo, New York. So, there's that. And so, um, like I said, after my mom, I lost my virginity. I started dating boys. Got my heart broken for the first time by the guy that I trusted that was my boyfriend and took my virginity. And the crazy thing about it is, looking back a few years ago, looking back at that situation, God been speaking to me. I've been had that gift of hearing Christ speaking to me. Um, he told me not to do it. And in my spirit, I answered, well, we're so close. Why not? Like, we might as well finish going all the way. And I wish I would have listened to God because God spoke to me in that moment in 2010 when I was 16 before I gave up my virginity. Um, so yeah, just losing my mom after that, I was really, really depressed. I cried, 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 and did not sleep well for a long time, for at least a year. And then after that, it was like on and off, still struggling to sleep, crying, just feeling so like I, the only person I had in this world left me. I'm good and I know she didn't want to leave but a lot of people would have been mad at God I was never mad at God I was mad at the timing I still loved God because I knew that without him I'm not gonna make it through this I'm not because I already seen the pattern with my father when he lost his mother at seven when he found her dead hanging on um in her basement in their basement because she was beat by her husband again and she felt like there was no other way out of it she felt like she had to take her life i knew that when he found her like that and since that turned out to be my story i knew that he turned to drugs and destroyed his whole life with drugs and alcohol and hustling drugs and living this fast life and not being there for any of his children that i could not let the enemy pull me down in any way yes i still allowed him to take me into drugs take me into bad relationships take me into um a bunch of crazy stuff but i did not let it destroy me and i did not let it keep me there and i thank god i thank god because i'm gonna tell y'all right now don't never let the op the the things that you go through that are hard make you a bad person or make you bitter to where you don't know how to heal don't know how to get past it yes people were doing what they did was wrong yes they were evil but don't make it to where you want to just be this horrible person and be mean and be closed off and be nasty and be rude to people around you you got to reflect christ if you believe i mean for those who don't believe the bible says they're condemned already meaning they're open for free game to everything that the enemy wants to do which is a bunch of bad stuff but when you got christ you're gonna be protected and if you be more so um obedient and listen you're even more protected because god can only do what you allow him to do he can't he's not he's a gentleman he's not going to force himself to do anything in your life or for you right he's going to bless you because he's a blesser but you know there's bigger blessings that you got to be obedient to receive but um back to my story when i lost her yeah i went into drinking guys all that and then i found christ um by september of 2010 which is about almost like right under a year later and i got saved well first i was going to church from september 2010 on my own every sunday by myself and every sunday even though if I, at that point i was smoking weed getting drunk on the weekend i will be right at the um altar every single sunday asking for prayer asking for guidance asking for healing for my heart and it was in a um, Baptist church because I was raised Baptist. But I also, also only always have believed in the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit. So they would pray for me. And then like by the time Christmas of 2010 came around, they came and surprised me at my house with two large gifts of presents for me. And she said, me and the sisters in the church, they were all elderly black women. They were all like, wow, we see this young, beautiful young girl in here every Sunday, always praising God, worshiping, and just even just being here, present in this church every Sunday was amazing for us to see a young person like you. And you come to tell us that, come to find out you're by yourself coming here every Sunday, and 
you know that was just so beautiful for us so we want to thank you for being a lover of god and for sh coming to our church and so they blessed me with two big things of um presents for christmas and some a big um tinfoil thing real big tinfoil like how you have when you have like a cookout for a large amount of people they gave me that of like i think it was what was it ham and collard greens i think it was because i told them my favorite thing was ham and collards <laughs> so that's what they brought me and literally i was just so not used to stuff like that happening i broke down in tears and just cried for like an hour because that was like so sweet and then um yeah i just kept trying to find men to feel the void of the hurt and of like feeling lonely um you know fornication uh quite often I'm um, just trying to fill voids of feeling loved and worthy. Yeah, all of us do though. Men and women, we all do stuff like that for those same, same exact reasons. So, that's why I try to let people know now. Like, we gotta stop that and just see God. Because that's really where we'll find our contentment. And our worth. And our the things that we're looking for. You know, in people and in intercourse and um physical touch um so once i turned 18 i got saved february i think it was february 5th 2012 i got saved that's my birthday into the kingdom um i said lord i'm gonna do this i'm 18 i know i'm probably not gonna consistently do the right thing but I want to do this and I want to do it for real. And if I fall, I'm going to keep getting up and I'm going to keep trying to live for you, Lord. Um, and I did it for a whole year straight of just praying, getting closer, learning God, learning his word, digging into the word every day. I learned so much. God was revealing so much to me over time. And I was like thinking like, man, I've heard my mom tell me about how when she was close to God, she could see people's aura at one point where she could see everyone's color of their aura. And I just wish we could meet her could like talk and like compare our revelations and our experiences and things like that with the Holy Spirit and Christ and his word. But um, I used to see her in my dreams. That was very helpful, very helpful for me to um have more peace dealing with her departure and knowing that she's safe and that she's happy and that she's not in pain um but all my life i've had what you can call prophetic end time dreams um god revealed to me that when i was 12 13 i when i started having the zombie dreams which technically he revealed to me later later on in life that those were also prophetic that um like my mom used to say, these movies don't bring this uh, movie ideas of like all types of movies, but especially like the scary ones and the sci-fi ones, they don't bring that out of thin air and out of nothing. They come from somewhere and some type of truth. Even if it is fake, um, a lot of it comes from a somewhere of some kind of truth. So, yeah, um, I've always had dreams of zombies when I was 12 and 13. Um, I've always had dreams like when she, when our, um, our friend of the family, a friend of ours, mom died in 2009 in October. I was thinking back to 2007 when I was 14 in my mom's bed and I had this feeling in the back of back, but way back in my mind, really subtly. I remember thinking like God was speaking to me back then in 2007 in my mom's bed, letting me know that somebody close to me a parent and somebody's parent is gonna not live to see an older age or something to that effect and when i thought back to that god was like that was me starting to use that gift in you but you didn't know what it was um once i got saved and i did the god thing for one year from 2012 to 2013 then i met um somebody that i went to school with um in middle school here in ohio and we started talking and we started dating and being together 
this person made it seem as though they were really sweet, really caring, really kind, trying to get in the trenches with you, you know, to bring you to a better place in your life. And, you know, just to teach you, help you, love you, grow you, and just to be your friend and be your man, right? But over time, within like three months, he, that person showed me that they were exactly the opposite, that they were nasty, rude, mean, cold, abusive physically and verbally abusive and um when you get in cycles like that it's very 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 hard to get out of and to turn your mind off from feelings and turn your heart off from feelings and start moving like men use logic to be, be more logical and especially if you're a woman who has a ginormous heart and like i said i feel everything deeply good bad and indifferent mostly the good <laughs> emotions and like things that people say and do and things that i hear the things that i see the things that i feel from good things bad things people good things good people bad people all that i feel everything i see everything um but basically i was in an abusive relationship where i was getting hit on talked down to belittled you know he said tell me i was stupid all the time a million times a week and for seven years on and off we were together on and off um now that i'm healed now that i'm older and i can take it into perspective and a better perspective it was terrible and i don't wish that on my worst enemy nobody deserves to get talked to in that way nobody deserves to get hit on um like I said before, any man that puts his hands on a woman or decides to yell at them and talk down on them has, one, they're weak, two, they need a lot of therapy, and three, they need a lot of Jesus healing and a relationship with God, and four, they got demons. That's just period. The internet teaches that narcissism is not a demon. It is. If you spiritual like me, you see, I've seen demons in the physical and in the spiritual in people and just walking around okay people like that they have demons narcissism is jezebel anger abuse those are evil spirits why do you think sometimes when you're around certain people you get tired why do you think when you're around certain people you just don't know what it is but they don't make you feel good and you got to get away from them yeah that's the reason but Back to my story, so I used to try to like heal him. I would try to tell him like, look, you can open up to me. That's what I'm here for. I can help you work through whatever issues and I could teach you how to like heal or get through it, you know, and he was just so closed off. But he did have many times, two times where he opened up and cried to me saying like, man, I wish life didn't turn out the way it did. Um, I'm a bad person. I treat everyone around me horribly. You don't got to stay, go away, you know, whatever, whatever. But every time I stay, I mean, I left. Every time I left, he would, you know, chase me. Um, as they do, nurses do with their supply. Or as my boy HG said, it's fuel and they need your fuel to fuel them because they're empty, bottomless pits of nothingness. That are That's because of their demon, Jezebel. But, um... Yeah, it just feels a female spirit, but it can be a man as well. So, boom, in and out of seven years, um, it was very traumatic for me emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically because I was never treated like that by nobody before. All my relationships with black men have all been positive, and even if it wasn't positive, it wasn't to that extent by no means, nowhere near. Um. So, yeah, I learned a lot. I learned to see actions for what they are don't take words um trying to cover them up and make them butter you up and try to change your mind i've learned that you don't deserve men or women to be hit on or talked down on to be told that you're stupid that you're ugly that you're this that you're that that you're not enough that you're not worthy enough that's not true um so my life story just is one of being very lonely i barely had i've had see the crazy thing is i've always been popular a lot of people know me i know a lot of people but nobody's ever included me nobody's ever spent time with me with me nobody's ever included me um on their important times in their life and 
nobody's ever showed to my any of my birthdays all my birthdays i spent by myself um even with family most of them i've been by myself a few i've had with my family but um yeah and then like god had been telling me since i was 21 that i was worthy that i was gorgeous that i was a queen that i didn't deserve it but i have my dad and me we're stubborn as heck like literally super stubborn mad stubborn but um then when you got doubt i mean not doubt when you when i started to get like a lot of like regret and anger Ooh, that's not good because you just wish you would have listened you know everybody can go through you know can understand that feeling when it comes to anything in life especially when it comes to love and relationships but yeah a lot of people um misunderstood me a lot of people disliked me was jealous and i'm not the type to just throw around the word oh everybody's just jealous of me i've always tried for many many years up until like the last year or so try to like deny 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 that anybody will be jealous of me i'm like no that's not how it is they're just being weird they're just doing this they're just doing that everybody around me is like no no dear don't be so vague that's called jealousy and that action is called jealousy hey it is what it is i'm i didn't say it i don't want to think even now it's still weird for me to like say that but yeah a lot of people um the weird thing about it is was all my life like i said in school especially but even outside of after the fact once i graduated a lot of people had a lot of problem with me they didn't like me but nobody came to step in with me with a problem like besides one ratchet 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 light skin girl from school and she was skinny and it was funny because like i was here for a grade so i'm like i'm not gonna entertain you we could fight off the grounds but nobody ever asked me to go do that. So I was just like, you want to look stupid talking to yourself because I'm here to get my A's and my B's and not miss my school days in, in school. So I let her talk. Anybody like she was the only person in seventh grade out of all the years I've been in school that ever tried to get come to me. that actually had a problem. With me. But yeah, so boom, there's that. Um, once I turned... 20 I learned that my ex was a narcissist and it really hurt me and it really broke my heart again he literally gave me about four or five heartbreaks back to back to back and I've already had my heart broken twice before him because I was with other guys before him but he was my first like adult relationship but God's telling me like when I left him at 27, I don't know, I've seen somebody on the internet, another woman, a Spanish girl say, I don't know what it is about 27, but at 27, there's this like weird switch that flips, like flip and all that, doing all the most begging and chasing and putting up with people's crap, it stops. I don't know what it is because that's what happened with me. It's like, yeah, that that's cut. That's everybody, friend, uncle, auntie, you know, best friend, whoever y'all all can be cut and y'all all was cut and I, it wasn't because i was being nasty it's because i was being i was tired of being used i was tired of being talked about i was tired of being one way one-sided i was giving 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 and nobody ever showed up for me not even in my graduation of high school nobody at my birthdays none of the times where i needed them not even when i lost my mom i couldn't even get my god family to give me a text or a call and they said because well, you're in new york excuse me that's what the internet is for all i asked for was a text all i asked for was a conversation to get me through losing my parent to my best friend at 16 i was a child that's a child y'all anyway i raised myself my father all he knew how to do was support uh, supply money food shelter and i'm grateful but he also gave me a lot of trauma he was very toxic my mom told me when I was 15 that he was abusive, um, emotionally abusive, and I did not, I heard her and I understood, but I didn't really understand. I found out the hard way. I love my dad to pieces. He's a good guy, but he's also cool, 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 cool. Come to find out, I just found out because he identif identified him as six of the five toxic father traits from, I think it was called, it's one of the main, um, main pages on youtube that do like mental health and like all that it did like draws they draw stuff and yeah he he was five out of six and then 2020 i found out the reason why is because he's actually a narcissist 
oh yeah my father's a narcissist and i think my sister's and brother's father is also one rest his soul we love him but he was and my adopted my grandmother my mom's mom the only grandma i ever knew she's a light-skinned black woman mixed with uh indian blackfoot she was actually a narcissist as well so that's why she came into our life because um she was gonna train me and my mom and um probably other people in our family to get accustomed and to deal with and to put up with jezebel the evilness of abuse from a narcissist and that's how the enemy uses his stuff he gets you early so that you can be for one like i said groomed and two damaged so bad so yeah um my grandma lover the pieces marguerite carter i used to be a cutter before my dad came out of jail and changed it he was like yeah i'm gonna have my baby have my last name so i just want to say like as a mixed person that looks the way i look i've always felt out of place as an alien don't belong nobody likes me nobody wants to accept me and then like this outer was just like offensive and gave people i guess green eyes of envy i don't even like i don't like saying that. i don't feel comfortable still like i said saying it but that was my experience and a lot of times i just cried a lot of tears of like feeling like why do i have to force things why i have to beg people to be in my life to support me to love me to be a friend to me and all of that and you know god was like you know what you don't need them you don't need them this was 2012 when he told me and i was crying to him for two hours straight on the couch in new york in my dad's house and i was like lord why 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 this hurts so 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 bad it hurts so 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 bad and he said just forget them you got me and i've never left you and i never will leave you and i was like wow yeah that's awesome and i love you lord for that but lord i need somebody in the physical he's like i will send you the right people in the right times and then fast forward seven years you gotta know people by their fruit like i said people will try to convince you otherwise by their words like chasing you begging you making you feel like telling you that they love you but what is their action showing the action showing that they hurt you with their words with their actions then they don't love you well yeah um that's my story and thank you for listening i know it's been a long story um once i left my ex-boyfriend in 2020 we were engaged I think twice or something like that or most of our relationship we were engaged called ourselves being engaged because that's when our sis do they want to marry everybody because they want to lock somebody down to be their permanent stuck supply to abuse and yeah i'm just glad i didn't because child ain't nobody got time for more abuse and being lied to and cheated on and all of that so when i left i cried a lot of tears lost a lot of sleep again and was angry at one point but god worked on me when you spend time in prayer and in your word i've really been since the pandemic before i even broke up with him been working on like why am i in the way i am why am i held back in certain areas why did i allow so many people to hurt me why was i banging and chasing everybody friends and ever romantic partners to be a friend of me a part of my life all of that and start really trying to give myself more self-esteem and i really want people to know that you are worthy you are loved and stop letting these dudes play with you period and stop letting these women use you yes you should provide but know the right person give them the test of loyalty and worthiness I don't know how to describe it, but you got to figure that out. Google it, YouTube it, I don't know. But there are women that are worthy and there are men that are worthy, but they're far few, few in between. But yeah, my life story was one of pain, loneliness, um, rejection, a lot of tears, a lot of mis being misunderstood um, and being mistreated. But once you learn your worth, you don't allow it anymore. Thank you so much. I love the Lord. Lord is everything. Um, he is returning, so we need to repent and get right. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for returning to my channel. Mwah. Thank you, and shalom, and bye.